Motion Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2023. This council resumes the second reading debate on the fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness and obstruction miscellaneous amendments bill 2023. Ms. Rebecca Chan, Chairman of the Bills Committee on the Bill, will first address the Council on the Committee's report. Ms. Rebecca Chan. Thank you, President. On behalf of the Bills Committee on Fines and Fixed Penalties, Public Cleanliness and Obstruction Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2023, I now report to the Council the deliberation work of the Bills Committee. The Bill seeks to amend the Fixed Penalty, Public Cleanliness and Obstruction Ordinance, Cap 570 to increase the fixed penalties in relation to the scheduled offences. Amend other relevant ordinances to increase the maximum fines that may be imposed by the court for certain offences relating to public cleansing or obstruction, and make related minor or technical amendments to the relevant ordinances. Members generally support the administration's proposal to increase the current fixed penalties level in relation to the scheduled offences under Cap 570. However, some members were concerned that setting the fixed penalty for the offence of obstructing a public place at $6,000 may impose financial burden on small traders. Members in inquired about the considerations that the administration has taken into account in arriving at the proposal. According to the administration, the number of complaints against shop, shop front extension has increased significantly in recent years. Some non-compliant shop operators even treated the fixed penalty as rental and operating costs for using the space outside the shops illegally. While the administration has already stepped up enforcement actions against shop front extension and has achieved some positive results, it is considered necessary to substantially raise the fixed penalty level to achieve greater deterrent effects to sustain the results. The current level of fixed penalty at $1,500 under Cap 570 was last adjusted in 2003. Since then, the cumulative inflation rate in Hong Kong has increased by around 60%, undermining the deterrent effects of the fixed penalty. An appropriate level of fixed penalty with sufficient deterrence is thus critical for maintaining and improving the environmental hygiene of Hong Kong. Members consider that in tandem with increasing the fixed penalty levels for the nine scheduled offences, the relevant enforcement departments should continue to take stringent and rigorous enforcement actions against contraventions, or else problems like shopfront extension and unlawful depositing of waste will persist. Some members have nevertheless commented that it is important to strike a balance between strengthening enforcement and giving regard to the affordability of the general public or small traders. The proposed increase in the current fixed penalty level may lead to greater resistance from the offenders and more confrontation between offenders and frontline enforcement officers. Members are concerned whether clear enforcement guidelines are in place to ensure consistency of enforcement standard. In response, the administration has advised that it will enhance the training for frontline officers, update the enforcement guidelines to assist frontline officers in determining on the spot the most appropriate enforcement action to be taken and the legal tools to be used. As a general principle, the circumstances of shopfront extension offences where fixed penalty notices are issued should be straightforward, clear-cut and capable of being easily established. The administration has further advised that since September 2021, the FEHD has launched a new mode of joint operations in cooperation with the police in various districts on a trial basis, under which obstructive items might be removed and seized. Compared to relying only on issuing FPNs or summonses to persons who cause such obstruction, this enforcement arrangement carries a greater deterrence effect with a higher non-compliance cost for offenders. Some members urged the administration to, along with the proposal to raise the current fixed penalty for the offence of obstructing a public place, which mainly targets shopfront extension from $1,500 to $6,000, consider introducing progressive fixed penalty. They believe that progressive fixed penalty could considerably increase the cost of non-compliance of repeat offenders, thereby achieving stronger deterrence effects. The administration has advised that it is conducting a detailed study on the powers and penalties 
of environmental hygiene related legislations with a view to enhancing the efficiency, effectiveness and deterrence of enforcement actions. Proposals were made to increase the level of fixed penalties in the first phase of the legislative amendment review, while a detailed study covering the legal basis, effectiveness, enforcement efficiency and cost effectiveness of progressive fixed penalty arrangements is being conducted in the second stage. The administration targets to complete reviewing the remaining environmental hygiene related legislation by mid-2023 which will, if appropriate, be followed by a separate legislative amendment exercise. Clause 1, bracket 2 of the bill provides that the bill, if passed, would come into operation on the expiry of three months after the day on which it is published in the Gazette. The arrangement allows sufficient time for extensive and comprehensive publicity on the increased fixed penalty levels to the sectors and the public at large. Members have called on the administration to partner up with trade associations or community organizations to organize large-scale large publicity events to widely publicize the proposed new levels of fixed penalty for the scheduled offenses. The administration has assured members that it would make use of the three months' time to conduct comprehensive publicity to ensure that everyone would be aware of the increased fixed penalty levels. Members note that after the passage of the bill, the forms of FPNs would no longer be made by way of subsidiary legislation as at present. According to the proposed new section 17A2 of CAP 570, the Secretary for Environment and Ecology will be empowered to specify the forms and must, as soon as practicable, after such a form is specified, publish the specified form in the cassettes. In other words, the Legislative Council will have no power to amend the forms. The Administration has advised that the relevant legal requirements and arrangements in respect of the nine scheduled offences and the fixed penalties, including the dispute mechanism and recovery of penalties, will continue to be stipulated in CAP 570 as at present. Any changes to these requirements and arrangements would need to be made through primary legislation, which is subject to scrutiny and passage by the Legislative Council. The concerned forms either prescribed by subsidiary legislation or specified by the Secretary must follow the relevant legal requirements and arrangements stipulated in CAP 570. The bill proposes to empower the Secretary for Environment and Ecology to specify the forms of FPNs. The Secretary may only change the formats of FPNs and administrative details, such as the payment methods, addresses of the post office box, and number of the post office inquiry hotlines. Members note that the arrangement will allow the Secretary to make necessary amendments to the forms in a timely and flexible manner. While not, not objecting to the proposed new amendments, Members have requested that in future, whenever an amendment is to be made to the form of an FPN, the administration should provide the draft revised form to the Panel on Food Safety and Environmental Hygiene for consideration or reference once available and before the cassetto of the revised form. The administration has agreed to accede to the above request from members. Now, the following are my views on the Bills Committee. Now, these are my personal views. I think the amendments are necessary. The relevance level of fixed penalty were from $600 to $1,500. It was 20 years ago in 2003. At the time, a lunchbox cost $20. Today, it is more than $50. As mentioned by the Secretary, the accumulative inflation rate has exceeded 60% in Hong Kong. The deterrence effects of the penalties have been undermined. To address the serious environmental hygiene issues in Hong Kong, we need to enhance the penalty level to a level where offenders will feel the pinch. This is inevitable. Now, it is 
we don't have an accurate answer on how high the level should be. There are views in the public that by enhancing, by increasing the penalty for short front extension offenders, we might be discriminating against those offenders who do not have the means to pay the fine. Well, I beg to differ. The spirit of the amendment is not to discriminate against those who can or cannot pay the fine, but rather a legal framework to fine offenders, be it individual or traders. Now, this is a serious offence which does not affect personal safety but affects environmental hygiene. The key is to balance, to strike a balance between the penalty and fairness. Whenever there are there are an offence, the law enforcement agency must enforce the law and hold the offender responsible. Now, different people may have different um, means to pay the fine. We cannot address the issue. Now, there are calls for introducing a progressive fixed penalty level for repeated offenders. This will come with more deterrence effects. Now, on principle, I do not object to a mechanism to punish repeat offenders more severely. Short front extension is a deep-rooted issue in community, especially BC commercial areas. There are always offenders, and it is difficult to stamp out the offences. Now, under this amendment, the fine has been doubled from $3,000 to $6,000. It is not an insignificant increase, and also and law enforcement agency can issue repeated FPNs, depending on the situation. So I think it will come with a deterrence effect. As I've mentioned just now, the law must strike a balance between the severity of offence and the level of penalty. If the penalty is so draconian that it exceeds the severity of the offence, it may lead to lashback and cause unnecessary confrontation. This is not something that we want to see. More importantly, under the existing mechanism, there are ways to deal with repeated or serious offenders. Besides issuing FPNs, there can also be criminal proceedings against the offenders. The magistrate can issue more hefty fines depending on the situation. Now, this amendment bill also increased the maximum fines that can be imposed by courts from $5,000 to $25,000. Now, it is a much more deterrent penalty. So I support the administration in that we shouldn't introduce a progressive fine just now. Now, I think fine is only one option. There are also education and enforcement. I think many would agree with me that even if we enhance the fine to $20,000, it would not help if, if we don't have sufficient law, en law enforcement, uh, sufficient um, offices, or frontline offices. Now, for in the daily enforcement exercise, frontline officers would be facing um, a large number of offenders. It may affect the effectiveness of the of the enforcement actions if there are too few frontline officers under the law enforcement agencies. We have to ensure that there are sufficient manpower allocated to areas where, se where the problem is more serious. And also, we have to ensure that there is some sufficient power accorded to frontline officers. Now, in the past, officers under the FEHD could not 
remove obstructions without the help of police. And also, it required police officers to gather evidence to initiate prosecution. Well, there are only so many frontline officers under the law enforcement agencies. Now, if the offenders hide the obstructions before the officers arrive, then there is nothing the officers can do. Now, it shows why the number of prosecution is much lower than the number of complaints received. Now, after the officers leave, some offenders may put the may commit reference extension again. Uh, yesterday, at the meeting of the panel on environmental hygiene and food safety, in the paper submitted by the government on further revising environment, environmental hygiene related laws, there are proposals including requesting the traders to remove the obstructions within the limits of time, otherwise they can be confiscated. And also, FPNs or prosecutions can be issued or initiated against offenders by FEHD officers. Now, I support those proposals. I hope the government would conduct the legislative amendment exercise as soon as possible. Now, lastly, on education. Now, the increase of, fixed, of the level of fixed penalties is a good opportunity for us to, cons to reconsider or review our work on civic education in relation to environmental hygiene. Now, you may still remember the um, litter box um, and also um, cleaning ambassador R. Duck. Well, we can't just put all the burden on our mascots. We have to educate why people cannot, should not litter. Now, this is a, an opportune time for us to educate the public and conduct publicity. Now, with the more hefty fine, we can be sure that um, the public will be more attentive to the issue. Now, this time of the government, attaches importance to environmental hygiene. Writing on this opportunity, we can make use of different means like um, pub announcement in public interest and also advertisements as well as the um, maskers to educate our younger generation. We can't just rely on fine and enforcement to keep the environment clean. Everyone must be civic-minded for this to happen. A clean Hong Kong is everyone's responsibility. Now, I hope the government will make use of this opportunity to conduct publicity, education, and enforcement so that people in Hong Kong, as well as their visitors, can see a clean Hong Kong. Thank you. I will submit. Liu Chang. Mr. Martin Liu. Mr. Deputy. Environmental hygiene is a factor of a livable city. There was a survey conducted. Out of 170 cities, Hong Kong only ranked 61. In terms of um, uh, culture and environment, is one of the aspects covered by the survey. Littering and um, illegal shop front extension are common occurrence in Hong Kong. We see shops putting merchandise outside their shops. This causes a serious obstruction is unsightly and it's a problem for environmental hygiene. The government needs to put in place multi-pronged approach to persistently clean Hong Kong so that Hong Kong be can become a more livable city. There are nine scheduled offences covered by this bill. Seven of them target certain behaviour, say for example, display of bills or posters without permission, depositing of litter or waste in public places, spitting in public places, fouling of street by dog feces, depositing of litter in country parks and special areas, spitting in country parks and special areas, and marine littering. There are two scheduled offences targeting shops. They are obstruction of public places and unlawful depositing of 
um, waste and construction waste. The fixed penalty has stayed at 1,500 since 2003. According to the information submitted by the administration to the LegCo, that there might have been enhancement in law enforcement action, but the number of um, tickets issued increased only from 2000, uh, increased from 27, 2019, 7,600, and 2021, 14,800. It's a significant increase. In relation to a littering of uh, construction waste, uh, there were 46,000 penalty tickets, an increase by 4,000 compared to 2019. We see that uh, there is not su no sufficient deterrent effect in the current level of penalty. And we have um, a significant uh, level of accumulated inflation. Now we see that for a number of um, scheduled offences, the penalty will be increased to 3,000. For those targeting shop extension, it will be increased to 6,000. But that is not the end of it. You might have increased the fine to 6,000, but still the deterrent effect is weak because it only means an increase by about $3,000 in operating costs for the shops. 80% of the respondents in the survey uh, think that there is a need to increase the amount. About 60% of the respondents think the current proposed level is appropriate. There are also surveys done by political uh, parties sharing the same findings. It shows that uh, the public strongly asked for actions to be taken to address environmental hygiene problems. The administration said that in the review of the second stage, they will in detail study, pro study about a progressive fixed penalty tickets to increase deterrence. I do welcome that. According to a report in February by the Ombudsman, it points out that um, in the number of action, in the uh, law enforcement action taken in 2021 by the FEHD, most of these cases are um, repeated, repeat offenders. The number of offenses increased by about 7.5 percent. So, for repeated offenders, uh, there is, there is a need to um, impose a stronger hand. In addition, the government should also enhance the inspection and law enforcement. Otherwise, uh, the increased penalty will not ha take effect. The Ombudsman said in the report that the FEHD fails to target the problem. For some obstruction black spots, there might have been frequent inspections, but the number of prosecution is low. And the number of inspections and law, law enforcement actions of the different uh, black spots are starkly different. It shows that uh, there is a difference in standard. I suggest that in relation to number of complaints and number of um, law, enfor law enforcement actions taken, uh, information should be collated together before they conduct the review. Usually, the FEHD will um, issue tickets under obstruction of uh, public places. The number of prosecution has stayed low. The FEHD should enhance the training of their frontline officers to better understand the offences involved. I understand that the police and the FEHD mounted over 500 joint operations to target uh, shop fr illegal shop front extension. I recognize their efforts. I expect that these joint operations can, co can continue to enhance their deterrence. Relevant departments should also review the effectiveness of their work to ensure proper use of public resources. In August last year, the government launched a scheme to target black spots. Over 700 uh, hygiene black spots has been uh, announced in uh, government uh, website. 
I do appreciate the determination of the government to clean up the streets. But I see on the website that the photos state that uh, the date is August last year, whereas f for the other photos there is no date stamp. We don't know whether there has been any follow-up action taken. I hope the government will con will constantly update the website so that members of the public can monitor the effectiveness of the government's work. The most important work to improve environmental hygiene is civic mindedness. We have a lot of public bins, about 11,000, far exceeding uh, 7,000 in um, Seoul and about uh, 1,800 in Taipei. But our streets are dirty. After mid-autumn festival, we see a lot of places littered with abandoned lanterns, um, packets of food, and candles. It shows that people don't take their rubbish home with them. There is a lot of room for improvement in this regard. When the government's cleaning up the streets, they should also work on um, work on ways to improve people's civic mindedness to keep the city clean. They need to think outside the box to make sure that the publicity and public education will reach every home. We have the free color um, waste separation bins, but still a lot of people treat them as just general waste baskets. A lot of these uh, waste separated end up in landfill. This initiative is not effective. The government needs to review their, their initiatives and to work to enhance awareness. A change of behavior and to clean with the street are um, massive tasks. We need to encourage a change of behavior to not obstruct the streets and not to litter. I s support the um, bill. Thank you. Mr. Dennis Leung. Mr. Deputy, I speak in support of the Fines and Fixed Penalties, Public Cleanliness and Obstruction Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2023. In the Policy Address 2022, the Chief Executive announced that the government will take a comprehensive review of the penalty level and the power of the government in relation to environmental hygiene. Well, we are called um, Paradise of Gourmet, Shopping Paradise, and the Pearl of the Orient. Members of the public expect the city to be clean, beautiful, more green, more color, more space. But reality is different. The government needs to be more aggressive in uh, their work to, to uh, tackle the problem so that they can deliver results. Back in 1948, there was the Clean Hong Kong campaign, and in 1956, uh, there was a Miss Peace. I never see that. In 1972, there was the litter box, and in 1992, we have uh, our cleaning ambassador, Artak. These I've seen. But there is another problem, Sh uh, shopfront obstruction. Hong Kong is crowded, streets are narrow. When the streets are, are packed, some pedestrian will have to walk on the roads. Shop operators place merchandise outside their shops or even onto roads, which causes a hazard to road users. If we are to keep our streets clean and unobstructed, the most important thing in publicity and public education. In these areas, the government should do more. They need to uh, trigger a change in, the, in people's mentality and behavior as well as their uh, habit, so that everyone will keep Hong Kong clean and uh, make that part of their habit and mentality. The last resort is penalty. 
I believe that enhancing the penalty is the most effective way to get the public to abide by the law to keep the streets clean. And this bill covers an uh, increase in fixed penalty from 1,500 to 3,000, covering six areas. First, display of bills or posters without permission, depositing of litter or waste in public places, spitting in public places, fouling of street by dog feces, depositing of litter in country parks and special areas, spitting in country parks and special areas. And um, there is also another adjustment of fixed penalty from 1,500 to 6,000. One is obstruction of marine places, marine littering, and unlawful depositing of waste. And for court cases, the maximum uh, fine and is also adjusted on on top of the um, length of imprisonment for first conviction. A fine can be level one, that is 10,000. For subsequent conviction, the maximum fine will be uh, level four, 25,000. For depositing litter in country parks or special areas, or spitting in country parks or special areas, if the case goes to court, then uh, the, the fine will be increased from level one, 2,000, to level three, 10,000. In relation to obstruction in public places, the uh, maximum fine will be increased from 5,000 to 25,000 or three months imprisonment. I think this proposal is supported by the general public. There is a minority that asks for a further enhancement. So regarding the proposed increase in penalties, I think the administration has struck a balance between uh, deterrence effect and affordability. Yes, it may be effective to increase uh, the penalty level, but if the law is not enforced, the problem will stay. In the past, we've encountered cases that law enforcement officers uh, will advise uh, shop operators to move the merchandise back into the shop, and there will be photographs taken before and after. But in a way, it's uh, officers condoning such behavior. And this has, uh, in a way, regularized uh, such behavior. I expect law enforcement officers uh, to enforce the law when the law is broken. Um, fixed penalty tickets or summons should be issued. I do believe that uh, these officers uh, will be impartial. On top of that, we can have joint operations to enhance effectiveness. I understand that the police and the FHD have worked together to work out new guidelines and action plan and mount and they have mounted uh, joint operations to tackle gray areas of uh, obstruction. When law enforcement officers uh, send um, additional fixed penalty tickets, they may be uh, assaulted and the situation may aggra aggravate. I hope that more training will be provided to ensure their safety and to protect them from injury. So with these initiatives I've just um, proposed, I'm sure that uh, littering and street obstruction will be properly tackled. And of course, people won't be happy if they have to pay a fixed penalty to, or to go to the court. But if you abide by the law, there is no need to pay attention to how high the uh, fixed penalty level is or what the maximum length of imprisonment is. I expect everyone to be working together to build a beautiful Hong Kong so that we can show the world um, that we are a pearl of the Orient and also a paradise. Dr. Tik Chi Yun. Mr. Deputy, the Deputy Chief Secretary led the effort that led to a major improvement to the scenes we see at the markets and the streets. I commend the Deputy Chief Secretary and the relevant departments for the work. But enforcement itself is not something that will guarantee sustained results. The government is now proposing stiffer fines to achieve greater deterrence. But then, Mr. Deputy, 
stiffer fines without enforcement will make the law meaningless. It's the same thing we've seen in the past. The law is there; no one's to enforce them. So, higher fixed penalties require enforcement to go hand in hand. Higher fines do not mean the departments can slack off. We also need clear guidelines for law enforcement. This is to avoid disputes at the street. You don't want to have a large group of FEHD officers surrounding an old lady over a row about the enforcement, because that can create negative publicity. And this is something to watch out for. To achieve effective law enforcement, the bill proposes higher fines for littering and unlawful depositing of construction waste. I support that, but then for small traders, the fine will go up from fifteen hundred dollars to six thousand dollars. I do have reservations about this change. Now, for shop front extension, the fine will go up from fifteen hundred to six thousand dollars. That's too onerous. For small traders or hawkers who are in inadvertent breaches, six thousand dollars easily makes up half their monthly income. If a hawker gets two or three such tickets, all their monthly earnings are gone. They just have a lapse in their judgment. It's a, it's just them being careless for the moment, and then they get a ticket. So this kind of fine may hurt the livelihood of small hawk, small traders or hawkers. For larger operators, they simply factor in the higher fines, turn turn them into part of the operating cost. So we need to do something about this. We need to massively bump up the cost of breaches for large operators. So I propose progressive fines to achieve a greater deterrence for repeat offenders. Mr. Deputy, obstruction and littering in a public place may not be something done on purpose. This has to do with insufficient support from the market or problematic settings. No place to put the waste or the cleaners. Then have the time to clean up all the waste. In time, we need better market settings. That's how we can address the environmental hygiene in a public place. You can have stringent laws, but you also need rigorous law enforcement. Otherwise, the law will not work. The Food and Environmental Hygiene Department needs to step up law enforcement, and the department also needs better support in law enforcement. The frontline FEHD officers will have body-worn cameras. But what about? Seizing, removing items, obstructing the street. You need enough law enforcement and the support. All these need to go hand in hand, and only then you can ensure safeguards for the public's right to access the street and remove. There's a proposal to raise fines to six thousand dollars to affect the livelihood of small traders. I will abstain from the vote. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Lam Chan Singh. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I speak in support of the bill. This proposal covers putting up of posters, littering, and spitting off. The fine for seven offences will go up from fifteen hundred dollars to three thousand dollars. Now, for shop front extension and other offenses, the maximum fine will go up to six thousand dollars. I believe this bill will achieve a stronger deterrent effect. This is also in response to people's aspirations for better environmental hygiene. At the same time, I'm also worried when the new rules kick in, the frontline officers of AEHD will run into problems. Back in 2015. A hawker control officer was undertaking duties in Central. He was shoved to the ground by a hawker. The officer died. We don't want to see this kind of incident happen again. Now, some FEHD officers' unions told me they are worried 
with much higher fines, officers will see more rows. The, the hawkers will fight back, so there will be much more stress on the officers. Littering is wrong. But we have seen disputes between officers and people. Now, some people put the rubbish right next to a bin or outside a refuge collection point. Or people leave the waste in a paper box outside the store or they spit into the drain. Some people think that's fine. But dedicated frontline officers do issue fixed penalty notices in those cases. We have seen many such cases in the past. Doubling the fines will worsen the dispute between officers and the people. So I suggest that the government should step up publicity when the new rules kick in. The government should explain to people what constitutes a breach of the law. Let the public and traders know the new rules are in place. Raise public awareness and that you will make the work easier for frontline law enforcement officers. The government has procured more than 800 body-worn video cameras for hawker control officers. I welcome this move. Now, Before recording the situation, the officers have to let the people involved know they are being filmed. This will enhance transparency. This will also protect the officers. This arrangement can also achieve greater deterrence. If stage one works well, then the government should consider giving body-worn video cameras to foremen too. This is to better protect them. But even with these devices, if, there are, if there's just one officer enforcing the law, you still have risks. Now, under the FEHD's cleaning unit, there is just one foreman patrolling and prosecuting offenders. Look at the hawker's unit. In, they enforce the law as a team. When you have a single person taking up all the work, that person is under higher risk. So the government should review the arrangement. Let the foreman go on patrol duties in twos so that they can look out for one another. The government's paper says between 2019 and 2022 for shop fund extension, complaints went up from 15,000 to 24,000 complaints. The number of fixed penalty notices went up from 7,600 to 15,000. But last year, the FEHD had 927 vacancies. The government wants to control its costs and achieve zero growth in the civil service establishment. I get that. But there is a need to fill the vacancies. You need enough frontline law enforcement officers to take up the prosecution tasks. I so submit I support the bill. Mr. Kissen Yang. Mr. Deputy, I speak in support of the fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness and obstruction miscellaneous amendments bill 2023. Now here are some photographs showing curious causing obstructions on Ma Chong Hang Road and Kowloon City Road. They have undermined environmental hygiene and traffic causing disturbances. I support the government's proposal to increase the level of fine from $3,000 to $6,000. It would be deterrent for small traders. However, not so much so for big stores. Now, for curious, for example, those in my photos, they are taking up 2,000 square feet of space. And if they are fined seven times, um, that is $35,000, they can make it for the loss with five deliveries. 
Now you have to enhance the level of fine to make it tangible. If the offender repeats the offenses, then you have to issue a suspension of operation, suspension of business order to them because this is what they fear most. Now the situation has been long standing because departments were working working in silos and they are grey areas. We can't just rely on the FEHD to deal with the SFE situation. Now the stores are very smart. They lay their boxes on the streets because the FEHD officers cannot enforce the law themselves unless it is a joint operation with the police. And also you have to make it regular enough. Twice or thrice a month is not sufficient. Now there are clear division of labor. The hawkers units only deal with hawkers. They would turn a blind eye to shop front extension of stores. It makes the stores think that the department is allowing this to happen. Now we have to make sure that there is clear division of labor and empower FEHD offices so that they can take forward prosecution and confiscate obstructions. Now I'm pleased to hear from the Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration that in the next stage there will be legislative amendments to deal to further deal with SFEs so that FEHD officers will not have to rely on police and can ask the store operators to remove the obstructions in 30 minutes. And also, FPNs can be issued and prosecutions can be taken forward with the footages filmed by the body one camera. Now the first time fine would be $15,000 and three months imprisonment. Subsequent offenses would come with $50,000 in fine and term of imprisonment. Deter deterrence effect will be even stronger. Now you have to make sure that the law is enforced. Otherwise, it will be a pape, a toothless tiger. Frontline officers of the FEHD should be allowed to take forward prosecution, and they should learn from how the police issued parking tickets. Another ticket can be issued if the situation is not ratified in 30 minutes. Now, instead of increasing the fine further, we can allow FEHD officers to issue multiple tickets, it would address the issue. And also, there should be everyone should be war should be equipped with a body worn camera. Now maybe we can learn from the mainland. When store are operating beyond their permitted area, the system would notify the law enforcement agency automatically twenty four hours a day. Now this has been adopted in a lot of mainland cities and has proven to be effective. Now, we have limited man, but we have unlimited technology. Smart enforcement is the trend. We should arm our frontline officers with technology to change the behavior of store operators and make sure that they understand the importance of law compliance. Now, I suggest we should regularize the joint operation between FEHD and the police. There should be a joint operation every day at unannounced hours. This will put fear in the store and if they still commit the offense, they should be issued with a suspension of business order. Now this amendment bill proposed to and to increase the level of fine of littering from three thousand dollars to six thousand dollars. It is deterrent. It comes with a deterrence effect, but we have to and we have to demarcate the area clearly. Now some people may think they are not breaking the law. Now they since the uh, lit, since the rubbish bin is full, if you put the refuse next to the bin you will still get charged. Now when the rubbish is blown away by wind then you will also be charged. Now some elderly people drop the tissue paper on the floor and before they could pick it up, they were given a FPN. So we have to define littering clearly to avoid 
dispute, and there should also be an appeal mechanism so that there is an avenue to appeal uh, for innocent people. Now, this is the first time the government is enhancing the level of fine in 20 years' time. There will be more confrontation between law enforcement agencies and the offenders. Now, since last Wednesday, the hawker units have been equipped with 41 camera in their duties. This is good because it will make their work more efficient and also they should be paired in two or threes. And also, body worn cameras can enhance the safety of frontline officers. Now, we have to find the litterbugs and also understand what litterbugs think. Now, they do that for convenience. If a moment of convenience would lead to a lot of inconvenience, it would deter them from doing so. Now, at present, those committing traffic offences would need to undergo an, an improvement course. Well, maybe we can put litterbugs in public cleanliness classes. Now, if that's the case, they will think carefully before they litter. Now, fine and enfor law enforcement is only retrospective. We should educate students in schools. The government must also conduct sufficient publicity. In the past, there were very, there were um, uh, catchy slogans like um, to encourage people uh, to not cause a uh, short extension and also uh, beware of the traffic and uh, so on. However, these slogans, we, have, we don't see these slogans recently. But the government should be creative in terms of publicizing the enhanced level of fine to promote civic mindedness and to harness the support of the public, then we will succeed. Thank you. Dr. Johnny Ng. Mr. Deputy, as an international city, we are, the, we are an oriental pearl. The government is committed to enhance environmental hygiene and make the city more beautiful. I support it. Now the fines will be and will be increased, including littering and uh, spitting, from one thousand five hundred dollars to three thousand dollars for short fence extension and illegal disposal of construction waste because of its significant impact. The fine will be increased to six thousand dollars for more deterrence. Now this is the right direction, and it is supported by the public in general. Back in SARS and under the epidemic, Hong Kong people are more aware of environmental hygiene. And also, the penalty level has not been increased for many years and is lagging behind inflation rate. It has lost its deterrence effect. Now, this increase is reasonable. Now, some may think that the increase to $3,000 is too steep, but I think most people are clean. We are just targeting a small group of black sheep. I think by enhancing, increasing the level of fine, um, they may be uh, deterred. Now, short front extension or illegal, unlawful obstruction of streets are very severe, and it seriously affects environmental hygiene. Now, between 2019 and 2022, there were some 15,000 complaints about short front extension. Now, last year it has increased to uh, 24,000 uh, complaints. That is a 60% increase. Now, by increasing the fine to $6,000, it may impose a financial burden on small shops. But the fact is, some stores are treating the fine as a rental cost. That's why they are so blatantly ignoring the law. So we have to increase the level of fine. I, submit the, I, suppose, I support the bill, but I also I am also concerned whether the enforcement work will be evictions and targeted. Now, with the increase of fine level, level the FEHD uh, frontline officers will um, have a harder time enforcing the law. There have been lots of confrontations already, so we have to enhance publicity to make people more um, civically civic minded. And I support the bill. 
Mr. Stephen Ho. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I speak in support of the bill that is the fines and fixed penalties, uh, public cleanliness and obstruction miscellaneous amendment bill 2023. That is in relation to littering. Previously, it was 1,500. Now, the fine will be the penalty will be increased to. Uh, 3,000 in relation to littering at some places or uh, throwing rubbish at sea, and for two offences, the penalty would be increased to 6,000. Well, some people complain that it's uh, too much for shops, but we're, we are not accusing shops for doing something Ter uh, for um, doing something extremely terrible. We yes, we just want the streets to be clear. We understand that business operators need to do a business, and we need to make it easier for law enforcement officers, that is the FEHD, um, to take law enforcement action. Some other members talk about a penalty ticket given to elderly people when a tissue paper is dropped onto the floor. Well, yes, you may accuse FEHD officers uh, to be lazy, but they are uh, compassionate. I have uh, seen uh, cases where grannies drop something onto the floor. The FEHD officers will even ask, did you drop something and remind the old lady to pick up uh, what they have dropped? When we look at the uh, legislation, we have to look at it as a whole because the increase in uh, penalty or fines level is only the first step to clean up Hong Kong. Yesterday, there was a panel. There was a panel on food and environmental hygiene. The first uh, option is to increase penalties and fines, and the second step is to do more. Well, previously we have to uh, well a notice will have to be posted before you can remove any objects obstructing public places, but that uh, requirement will be dispensed with. In relation to the suspension, I think that uh, it will be resolved in the second stage. Some people say that the penalty level is not high enough. The DAB proposes pro a progressive uh, fine. And that is based on when the existing mechanism does not is not changed. Say, for example, for the one thousand five hundred for shop illegal uh, illegal shop extension or littering um, is very is peanuts to them. And when it's a repeated offence, there needs to be a progressive system in place. But now the government proposes an increase from one thousand five hundred to six thousand. Some people think that is too much, especially for small shops, and there is still one unresolved issue. That's it, as relating to illegal shop extension. Is uh, say a staff member just looking, looking after the merchandise, tickets meted out. Uh, the owner of the merchandise would simply say, well, there's nothing to do with me. So it will be left uh, for the employee to pay the fine. It's just like when you owe someone 2000 you pay back. But if you owe someone 1000000 million, you may, as well, you may very well run away. Well, in the future, when the fine is, is paid, it should be paid by the um, merchandise owner. I think that's the most important thing, but we have not touched that. Regarding suspension of operation, well, if the case goes to court and if uh, the defendant is sent to imprisonment for three months, in a way, is suspension. Or do you think that it's like a listed company when the CEO is absent, the company continues to run? I think there can be adjustments in the second phase. I agree with the uh, chairperson, Ms. Um, Chen Ha Yen. Yes, we need to have law enforcement, public education, and uh, publicity. 
Some people say that there is insufficient manpower to enforce the law. Well, for the first phase, I think they don't. They have actually saved on manpower. Some people talk about uh, Section Four or Two of uh, Summary Offences uh, Ordinance. Well, you don't need to send police officers. The traffic warden will just take down the registration mark and details, and that's it. When officers wear uh, body worn cameras, they take down the particulars, and then that's it. Be because uh, the fixed penalty will be sent out. If it's not paid, then there will be a warrant. I think that um, there will be a safe on manpower. You don't have to worry about storage. I think there is uh, a law stating that uh, if it's an acquittal, then you'll have to make compensation. So I think there is a positive um, impact from the first phase. Now I move on to public education. I think we need to take the opportunity to tell the public. Well, current rent seems to include il uh, the cost from illegal obstruction of a public place. Some shops told us that they support the proposed increase in penalties. Say, for example, I myself and two other members are operating shops side by side. I will expand my shop front by three meters, and the other two members will have to extend their shop front uh, accordingly. And if I ex extend it by six um, feet, then the other two members will extend theirs by six feet. So the increase in penalty means that uh, it will create a level playing field. Yes, there are shop owners uh, that will not be daunted by the 6,000. At any event, we accept that there is currently no proposal for progressive fines and penalty. We want to see if the current proposal will achieve its designed effectiveness. On behalf of the DAB, I Say that I, I say that we support your proposal, and I see that uh, in the first in the second stage, this coverage is extensive. Covers uh, water leakage, rodent problems, uh, hoarding, uh, illegal shop uh, extension. Seven to eight uh, different areas. I ask members of the public to pay more attention to this because this is not just about an increase in penalty. I reckon the government will um, do a lot more than that. And that's all I would like to say for now. Mr. Ben Chen, Mr. Deputy, Mr. Stephen Ho said that we support this bill because in relation to littering and illegal shopfront extension, we've heard numerous comments and complaints. So something needs to be done, and the current term government is serious in handling this issue. The chief, the deputy chief secretary, was asked whether it's just a one-off campaign or a sustained effort. We're told that it's a sustained effort. We were doubtful. When the bill was introduced, then we saw the determination of the government to make it work. So relating to the increase in penalties for um, street obstruction and littering, we support, we support these initiatives these proposals because this is an effective way to solve these long-standing problems. That was the time when the situation improved, when it was in increased to 1,500 um, people moved the merchandise back into the shop. But after a few months, they treat the $1,500 as additional rent or part of the rent. Will people treat the $6,000 as part of the operating costs? 
We understand the difficulties of uh, encountered by law enforcement officers. There were cases when FEHD officers were assaulted after they had been assaulted. There were, was was there support given to the officers involved? Perhaps not. As a result, officers are reluctant to take action. And in turn, it aggravates the street obstruction problems. Now something is proposed to, to make improvement. Body-worn cameras will be given to law, law enforcement officers to protect both members of the public and the officers themselves. The officers will no longer feel threatened. They won't feel that uh, there are risk of uh, being stalked, followed, attacked. Mr. Stephen Ho also mentioned about another point. I, I see that uh, the streets are quite rather tidy and clean now. I asked the stores what's going on and store operators think that is good because it's a level playing field. The streets are clean and shoppers have a better experience. Previously, the goods were scattered everywhere. Shoppers were forced to walk on the road. Now, under the proposal, there is uh, the penal the level of penalties and uh, fines will be increased to ensure deterrence. I think it's effective. Most important thing is for it to persist, to be a sustained effort. Someone asked, if there will be cases when, say, a foreign domestic helper is packing uh, stuff to send home. Will they be given penalty tickets because of the obstruction? And there are also people uh, very busy packing things before or after Christmas. What about um, unfair law enforcement action taken against one but not the other? We ask. We have asked questions. We don't want the proposed arrangements to cause inconvenience for low tech circuits and for a shopping mall in Chun Wan. We hope. That, uh, that is in uh, Lake Sang Plaza. We hope that the space will be cleared. There won't be any. There won't be obstruction of uh, public places anymore. Some people do need to pack parcels to send home. You need to give them the place to do it. Don't forget what you have promised us in the discussion in the Bills Committee. We want the problem to be resolved. We want to ensure fairness when it comes to law enforcement. There were problems with the outsource um, arrangements. The old practice was uh, to have the highest um, weighting on price, but now it's 50-50 uh, for price and, uh, and, and other terms. We see that um, work has improved. I hope that the government will step up publicity so that we will be able to see clean streets again. We support the legislative amendment, and we look forward to the initiatives of the administration. Mr. Holden Chow. Thank you, Mr. Deputy.
I speak in support of the fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness and obstruction, miscellaneous and maintenance bill 2023. I want to focus on the stiffer fines for shop front extension. In Chunmun, Sanho Market, you could see the goods all over the place. Residents couldn't even walk in the area. At some particular stores, these people there were very abrasive with the local residents. FEHD officers went there. They went to those stores that were the bad apples. Officers were attacked. That would not work. I thank the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department and the police for responding to our request. The fine was $1,500. The fixed penalty notice at $1,500 was treated as part of the overhead. Little, if any, deterrent effect in that FPN. So we ask the police to mount joint operations with the FEHD. We ask them to seize the goods on spot. The goods were worth way more than $1,500. That's how you achieve deterrence. I was there on site. I was there with the police and the FEHD. On the spot, we had law enforcement. There were recalcitrant people, so we seized the goods. That action sent a clear signal to the other stores. They could not keep doing that. That is shop front extension. So afterwards, in Sanho Market in Chumun, you could f see cleaner streets. Residents could actually walk in the area. So we are deeply grateful for the police and the FEHD for willing to take the step of seizing their goods. The joint operation was about deterrence. That brings us back to the stiffer fines today. $1,500 as the fine level is treated by the bad apples as part of their overhead. Now, the proposal is to bump up the fines to $6,000. I do see there will be much stronger deterrence. These traders will do the math themselves. If they don't want the $6,000 fines, they will play by the rules. That may make it easier for law enforcement. That may even obviate the need to send officers to enforce the law on the spot. So you need enough deterrence in the fine. So let's proceed with the stiffer fines and then we can consider whether to have progressive fines. I agree that we should keep an eye on how it works. Let's give the stiffer fines time. Let's see how much improvement that brings. If the stiffer fines w can do the trick, very good. But if even with the stiffer fines, you see backsliding or little improvement. And then we can explore progressive fines. Whatever the case, there are law abiding traders. They also agree we need stricter law enforcement. The last thing they want to see is that to have the bad apples ruining the reputation even for the law-abiding traders. There are upright operators who don't want their reputation ruined. They don't want to see a tiny fraction of bad apples ruining the reputation for the entire market. Now, on seizing goods, that happened in Sanho Market in Chunmun. That worked in Chunmun. 
so we can keep that on the table. With stiffer fines, we may not need seizure in the future, but you need to keep seizing the goods in your toolbox. When you have a recalcitrant culprit, you may have to resort to seizing goods as your last resort. But at the end of the day, you need strict law enforcement. The government needs to do this. That way, People visiting markets actually have the space they can walk in the area. And local residents also get into conflict with the traders. When that happens, you get other problems. The local residents suffer because they become subject to verbal abuses from the traders. That leads to resentment. So you fix the problem and you avoid disputes. So I support this move to raise the maximum fines. I call on the government to get it right with the law enforcement. That way you clear the goods and people can walk on the street. Mr. Peter Shu. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. This year, there's a new cityscape I thank Mr. Warnerchuk and the Environment and Ecology Bureau for the work. Back alleys, goods obstructing streets, long standing major thorny issues have been resolved because of your work. People can see and experience the cleaner streets. People are happier. That's what the chief executive means by a sense of happiness. Now, the, the deputy chief secretary led this effort. He's determined about getting the job done. From his biography, I know that back then he was the director of environmental hygiene that is the director of food and environmental hygiene. I believe back then as the director, Mr. Chirk wanted to deliver results, but he was the director and he was confronted with the long-standing major thorny issues. He couldn't get the work done alone back then. So after the years, he's now the deputy chief secretary. Now he can lead the campaign involving different bureaus he could lead, lead this task force on district matters. He managed to fix the long-standing and thorny issues, and we now see results. But people wonder, what about the traders? I'm from the retailing and wholesale sector. Traders take a different view. In flower market, and this is a matter I wrote to the government about. Flower markets need special arrangement, and I wrote to the government about this. The government has replied the flower market is among the five places where some leniency is allowed. Three feet. That's the leniency, but that's better than nothing. Still, a balance is needed. There's the interests of the local residents and there, there are also the interests of the traders. You need a balance. On June 14th, it, the Federation of Hong Kong Kowloon and New Territories Traders had a meeting with the Secretary for Environment and Ecology. At the meeting, the discussion covered the do's and don'ts. I hope 
the group that is the Federation of Hong Kong Kowloon and New Territories Hawker Associations could continue to work with the department. So these are some examples showing the trade is willing to support the work. But does that mean I support the bill? People can see for themselves the cleaner streets, the much improved situation with shop front extension. Law enforcement has been strict with the frequent patrols because officers are keeping an eye on the situation. Any breach may lead to fines. But now that people have scaled back the shop front extension, the fine is still $1,500. This means even before we have the stiffer fines, you see much improved streetscapes. So why should we raise the fines? I believe Mr. Warner Chirk, as the Director of Food and Environmental Hygiene, was very diligent in his work. Now there were limitations he faced back then. Now he's the Deputy Chief Sec Secretary. He led this effort and it all worked. At the Bills Committee, I also raised this point. The fine has not been raised since 2003. There is inflation, some argue for a higher fine to factor in the cumulative inflation. The inflation rate, cumulatively speaking, is 60.1%. So out of a base of $1,500, their increase should be $900. Now, if the government asks for a limited increase, I would accept that. $1,500 to $3,000, I would accept that. I would support it. But now the proposal is to bump up the fine from $1,500 to $6,000. So where does the extra $3,000 come from? There's an argument that some people treat the extra fines as part of the overhead. You can try handing these traders $1,500 every day. People are showing you with their action that they have stopped their shop front extension. The stiffer fines will pose a lot of stress on traders. Now, there are people saying, Follow the law and you'll be fine. But let me give you an example. I just received something today. I can show you the WhatsApp message. A trader came to me. He's in the new territories. The trader just sent me this. Uh, I won't disclose the industry. It's a ground level store. This just happened today. Four items were delivered to the shop front. There were 140 boxes. The trader spent seven seconds on each cargo. So this trader would need 16 minutes to move all the goods into the store. The FEHD officer told the trader to finish moving everything in 15 minutes. The trader said, I'm already spending just seven seconds on moving each box. But the FEHD officer asks this trader to spend just one second on moving the goods. There are retail stores that also do wholesale. Retailers, once they do wholesale as a whole together, they have lots of goods coming in. They need somewhere to put the goods when the goods just arrive. I made this point to you several times at the Bills Committee. You just need to try to strike a balance. Well, I have this case in point. The trader was fined $1,500. And the trader was told in the future they would be fined $6,000 with the new rules. So spare a thought for these people in business. Now, if the goods are left on the pavement for hours, for night, it's okay to find them. But at this, in this case, I just brought up, 
If the trader is willing, I will just refer the case to you. But if that's the approach we take, how can traders stay in business? Sometimes the same store has several trucks arriving, all the goods arriving at the same time. The trader won't have enough time to move all the goods to the store space. So this is the problem with bumping up the fines from $1,500 to $6,000. So you need to spare a thought for the traders. Secretary, I support your work. In terms of making Hong Kong a cleaner place, we discussed stage two review yesterday. Grand plans, I support that. With inflation, I agree that we should raise the fines. Raising it to $3,000, fine. I'm good with that. I support a $3,000 plan, but I oppose the $6,000 fine. But if you put everything together, I cannot agree to such a plan. I do thank you for the work you've done. Mr. Vincent Zhang. Thank you, President. I speak in support of this Fines and Fixed Penalties, Public Cleanliness and Obstruction Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2023 submitted by the government it includes enhancing the level of FPNs for various offences on the schedule from $1,500 to $3,000 for littering and also for unlawful disposal of construction waste from $1,500 to $6,000. Now recently, we have seen worsened situations on rodents as well as public obstructions. Now, the government has started a new campaign on cleaning Hong Kong. The DAB has also set up a working group and we submitted 150 improvements proposals to the government on cleanliness black spots over the territory. Now, I appreciate the government's work on improving environmental hygiene. It shows the government is determined to enhance the cityscape of Hong Kong. With the help of frontline cleaning staffs, as well as FEHD officers, many places have seen improvements. Now, this is a street in Sham Shui Bo. We never imagined that this the alley can become so clean. Now, the district office even make the uh, put up a um, a display uh, in the alley. So I really welcome the efforts of the government. Now, with the increased level of fine, there is a higher deterrence effect, and I support it. Now, short front extension and unlawful disposal of construction waste are more serious issues. Now, in Sham Shui Po, just off the wet market, some stores have extended their storefronts again and again to the point that pedestrians cannot walk safely. Now, this morning when I went to Sham Shui Po, I walked past a street where the pavement is always obstructed by a fruit store. Now, the situation has been rectified now. In the past, pedestrians have to walk on the carriageway to bypass the streets because of short front extension. Now, Peter Chiu said that some shops would treat the 1,500 fines as a rental cost. So we also think this is necessary for the government to increase the level of fine. Mr. Peter Chiu talked about the plight of the stores they have no place to unload the goods. Now, I hope the government will lay down clear guidelines for frontline officers on when to issue verbal warnings and when to issue FPNs. 
I would I would like to talk about unlawful disposal of construction waste. This is a long-standing issue, which we which I think um, there is much room for improvement. Now, in Shamshibo, we have seen a lot of construction waste disposed on the streets after uh, from renovation work um, in subdivided units. Now I hope uh, more people would make use um, of the uh, ho-ho skips. Now with the enhanced level of fine, we have to ensure that um, there is sufficient and there is um, commensurate enforcement, including installing CCTVs in alleys. Now, on the issue of enforcement, the ombudsman also said that the enforcement level is not sufficient concerning environmental hygiene legislations. I understand that the government will further amend the relevant laws in the next round of review. Maybe we can enhance the efficiency of enforcement more. Now, we have to sustain the efforts. We have to Besides uh, consulting the public during the second round of review, the government will also work on cityscape, improving the cityscape in the next round of work. Now, the XJD has done a lot of beautification work for the cityscape. Now, I've visited a public housing estate. I've seen how the housing department has improved cityscape in the estate. It came with a lot of benefits. It helped enhance the sense of belongings of residents in the neighborhood. Now, this is something that I hope the government can do more in the second round of the review. Now, it is everyone's responsibility to improve the environment. Now, the government should enhance law-abiding awareness of citizens and um, crack down on black spots. Now, I'm speaking behind Mr. Peter Shiel. I've been paying close attention to what he said. I thank Mr. Peter Shiel for his concern. Um, he has helped a lot in terms of communication with um, the store operators. It is not an easy, easy task. Now, Mr. Peter Shiel always said that he has been intimidated. Uh, me too. Uh, there are very intimidating store operators telling us in the face that they are not afraid of the $1,500 fine. Now, of course, we don't want to resort to the most extreme uh, level of fine, but there are people who are really stubborn, so uh, maybe we have to resort to that as well. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, I now invite the Secretary for Environment and Ecology to respond. President, I'm deeply grateful to Ms. Chen Hoi Yan, the chairperson of the Bills Committee and its seven members, and the Electrical Secretariat for their effort in finishing the scrutiny of the fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness, and obstruction miscellaneous amendments bill 2023 with thoroughness and efficiency. I also thank the members of the member who just spoke. They offered great comments on this bill. The chief executive announced in his 2022 policy address a full review of the existing statutory powers and penalties under our laws on environmental hygiene. The, di the District Matters Coordination Task Force conducted a two-stage review to boost law enforcement efficiency and to achieve a stronger deterrent effect. The goal is to effectively improve and strengthen environmental hygiene. This is to ensure we can have a clean and beautiful cityscape and that this will last. At the first stage, the government has proposed raising the fixed penalties for offenses such as littering and shop front extension. To this end, we submitted the bill to Let's go on May 17th this year. The bill mainly covers the following. First, amending the fixed penalty public cleanliness and obstruction ordinance cap 570 to raise the fixed penalties for seven scheduled offenses, including littering and spitting, from $1,500 to $3,000, and to bump up the fixed penalties for SFE 
and shot an unlawful depositing of construction waste or huge amounts of other waste to six thousand dollars. Second, raising the maximum fine that a court can impose for convictions on summonses for five scheduled offences under their respective ordinances. And third. Empowering the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, the Housing Department, the Leisure and Agriculture Services Department, and the Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department to issue fixed penalty notices or FBNs for unlawful depositing of construction waste of huge amounts of other waste, and empowering the Environmental Protection Department to issue FBNs for littering in the public place. This way, law enforcement officers from various departments will be able to issue FBNs based on the size and type of waste, reducing the need for interdepartmental referrals. The bill, if passed, will be gazetted next Friday, that's July 21st. The bill will take effect three months after it's gazetted, that's October 22nd. We will conduct extensive publicity in this three-month window to bring the stiffer fixed penalties to the community's attention. And then the government will strictly and impartially and fairly enforce the law. The second stage review has started. Yesterday, the Deputy Chief Secretary briefed the panel on food and environmental hygiene on our preliminary recommendations. As a next step, we will proceed with the consultation. At the Bills Committee and during the debate just then, members were concerned about the impact of the stiffer fines on small traders. Let me point out that shop front extension is an environmental hygiene issue that's front of mind for the public. More than 24,000 such complaints were received last year. The current term government is committed to tackling SFE and has achieved some success. This is widely recognized by the public. To ensure sustained results, we must raise the fixed penalties, complemented by publicity and education, to achieve a stronger deterrent effect and better awareness of the law among traders. In fact, when we conducted public consultations last December, most respondents agreed with bumping up the fixed penalties for SFE to $6,000. Meanwhile, we understand traders' concerns. That's why the Environment and Ecology Bureau and the FEHD met with Mr. Peter Shiu and the Federation of Hong Kong Kowloon and New Territories Hawker Associations after our meeting with the Bills Committee. We explained to the Hawkers Group our policy and law enforcement approach to allay their concerns. At the Bills Committee and during the debate just then, members suggested a progressive fixed penalty system for short front extension. Yesterday, the Deputy Chief Secretary at the panel meeting explained the point. In our Stage 2 review, we explored and studied the feasibility of this idea. We looked at the legislative intent, success of law enforcement, and reasonableness in sentencing. We concluded it would not be a good idea to have progressive fixed penalties for shop front extension at this stage. In fact, the government has proposed a range of legislative amendments to further combat SFE in the second stage review. There is already the law enforcement strategy of issuing multiple FBNs to people who breach the law repeatedly within a short time. These measures will be able to curb SFE with success. Many members reminded the government of the importance of stepping up publicity. We fully agree that publicity and education matter. In fact, we propose a three-month window between the Bill's Gazetto upon passage and commencement specifically to ensure ample time for the public and different sectors to learn about the latest legal requirements. There will be both offline and online publicity. The relevant departments will also reach out directly to particular trade and target audience groups such as seniors and students. The departments will also work with district stakeholders, both individuals and groups, on local publicity to ensure everyone is aware of the new fixed penalty levels and the need to follow the law. Some members argued the government needs to step up training and support for frontline officers. The FEHD attaches importance to the problems and difficulties encountered by frontline officers in doing their duties. Legal training, communication skills, response to emergencies, these are the areas covered. The hawker control officers will also be given 41 video cameras. Now, with the stiffer fines, the FEHD will step up training for frontline officers starting from July 3rd. Hawker control officers will 
have been given body-worn video cameras. So as they perform their duties, they can record the situations. Frontline officers generally support the new measure. They believe this will help with law enforcement actions. Traders also support this because this will ensure greater transparency. Members also brought up cases of inadvertent breaches or the loading and unloading of goods. They wonder whether traders handling goods will be subject to fixed penalty notices. The fixed penalties have been around for 20 years. Frontline officers have ample experience in enforcement. There are clear departmental guidelines for officers to follow. So when the FEHD officers come across a suspected case of obstruction or littering, officers will follow the departmental guidelines in performing their duties so members can rest easy on this. At the Bills Committee, some members argued that when there's a need to change the format of the fixed penalty notices, the government should provide the amended format in the form of a draft to the panel for reference and discussion, and then the amended format is gazetted. The government agrees. So, Chair President, the government is committed to improving Hong Kong's environmental hygiene and cityscape to respond to people's aspirations. We see higher fixed penalties for relevant offenses supported by law enforcement and public education as the key as the key to the continuous improvement in Hong Kong's environmental hygiene, consolidation of such results and achievement of a more livable city. I urge members to support the passage of this bill. I so submit. Thank you, Mr. President. I now put the question to you. That's the fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness and obstruction. Miscellaneous Amendments Bill 2023 be read the second time. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Fines and fixed penalties, public cleanliness and obstruction, miscellaneous amendments, Bill 2023. This council now becomes Committee of the Whole Council to consider the